Today we're looking at the Apostle Paul's Philippians prayer. And I really think that this prayer sets the tone for this entire epistle. It's obviously to note that Paul most likely wrote this uh, from a prison cell. And I think that had influence in, in, in the theme by which he prayed. So the Philippians prayer begins in verses 4 through 11 here. And, and it reads as follows. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you since I have you in my heart. And whether I'm in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And here's another way. He says, and this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in depth of knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and be able uh, to be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and the praise of God. And this is a good one. So this is a wonderful pattern of prayer. I love praying prayers that I know that Paul prayed and probably Christians have prayed for centuries and thousands of years. And so let's let's start with this first prayer point. And maybe it's not something you think about, but here's the thing. I, I, I put these in the word keep. So this first one is, let's keep our joy. Maybe you never thought about it, but really God has joined together prayer and joy. And as prayer increases, the outcome of that is that joy increases. We can get low on joy. In fact, the joy of the Lord is our strength. The Bible says in the Old Testament that if we don't serve the Lord, joy will end up serving our enemies. So joy is powerful. When's the last time you just asked the Lord to, to, to give you joy, to fill you with joy, for it to rise up within your midst, to blossom in, in, in your midst? So let's take a moment and ask the Lord to fill us with joy. There's, a, there's this, the next one I think is good, and that's keep your confidence. I mean, man, there are so many things that can shake our confidence. And it's so easy, I think, for discouragement to set in, to, to feel not encouraged in, in our hearts. And sometimes we can have this subtle erosion of this belief that um, God's doing even a good work. Sometimes we don't see it like, well, man, what is he even doing? It's this unshakable belief that God is doing a good work. So why don't we pray this way on this one? As we as enter this name of keep our confidence. Ask the Lord to restore, thank him for the good work he's doing, even if I don't see it. Just declare and shake, God, I have a confidence that you're going to complete this work, that you're doing a good work. And I've even done this. I said, Holy Spirit, remove discouragement from my heart. And Holy Spirit, would you encourage me? Would you give me an encouraged, confident heart? Let's take a few moments, maybe 30 seconds here, and pray along those lines. I, I, I lo just love how Paul always gives us about four or five things to pray for. And I think this next one is, is, is and I think it's a good one. It says, keep loving well. 
He just says, I pray that you're, you're, you would grow in your depth of knowledge and, and, and insight into um, the, the, the love of God. And so let's keep loving well. And let's just, Lord, would you help me to operate, to dwell in, to walk in a spirit of love as I understand your love for me and the depth of that. Let me reflect that in in a wider way to the people around me. So let me grow deeper into you as I understand your love. Let me share that in a wider context, deep and wide. Let's pray for our love to deepen and to widen. Let's do that for 30 seconds. And this uh, next one is uh, keep seeing clearly. Now, I, I think this one's fascinating. And and, and, I, and, and I love what he says, that um, that you may be able to discern what is best. And, and I just love that discern. And here's the thought I have. As our love for God increases, discernment increases. Let me say it a different way. As intimacy with God increases, our ability to discern his voice, to discern his ways, uh, to discern his leading in our life, that is the byproduct of that. So why don't we pray this way? Ask the Lord to open your eyes in a spiritual sense to what he's doing. Let me see it, keep seeing it more clearly. Let me discern what is best in this season scenario and in my future and in my present even. Let's pray along those lines, Lord. Let me discern. Let me me open my eyes and I may see what you're doing. Here's another one. Uh, Keep being an example. And I I think this is is good. He says that you may be blameless and that you may be pure and that he may lead you on a path of righteousness. And I just think that is Paul lived with this reality. And I think we live with this reality that people are watching us and that we are an example for others to follow. And I love this admonition here that God would give a sense of purity, holiness, blamelessness, that we would walk on paths of righteousness. It never gets old praying along those lines and just declare it even. Lord, I want to I want to be blameless. I want to be righteous. I want to be pure. And invite the Lord. And if there's any areas where you feel like you've deviated from the prayer, just repent and ask him for his forgiveness and to cleanse you and, and restore you a sense of purity, blamelessness, and righteousness. Why don't we take a few moments and do just that? And I like how he closes. And to the glory and praise of God. Man, why don't you do that for a moment? Can we just end this prayer this way? Let's take 30 seconds or so and and acknowledge uh, God for the good things in your life. I don't care how incrementally small it is or how big it is. Let's take a moment and realize that that came from God. And let's just thank him and give him the glory for the good things that we are seeing in our lives.
Uh, let me close this uh, by praying this prayer out loud. Father, I just, I pray today. I handle so many things in this prayer. I pray that you'd give joy and you'd give it to the full. I pray we would experience your joy. I pray you'd restore confidence. Lord, that we would, you would encourage us and you would move discouragement far from us. Lord, I pray that, that, that we as individuals would do an incredible job of, of understanding your love, but also sharing and reflecting that love to a wider audience, that we would grow in depth of knowledge and insight. Also, Lord, I just pray that we keep seeing clearly. I just pray, let discernment increase as we walk with you. Let us more easily discern your ways. Let us understand the nudges of the Holy Spirit. Let us, let us discern clearly the paths of the Lord. And I pray that, Lord, you'd restore to, to me, to us, you'd restore a sense of purity, a sense of blamelessness, that we would not, uh, that we would hate evil and that we would love righteousness and that we would choose it. And Lord, as in all cases and all things, everything for the glory of the God. And Lord, we just pause and we thank you for the good things that you have given us and that you are doing and that you will do. We have an unshakable belief that you're good and all glory belongs to you. So we just humble ourselves and give you all the credit. No, all the good came up from you. And the greatest thing you gave us was Jesus. And we thank you for sending us the Son. We thank you for the forgiveness of sin. We thank you for his sacrificial death. We thank you that he daily liveth to intercede and pray for us. We thank you for the gift of your Son. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen.